Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Sam, I'm a licensed cosmetologist, and today I'm gonna share with you how I do consultations with my clients at the salon. It's something that I'm always working on, always trying to get better at, so I don't think that I'm perfect at this by any means, but I have definitely improved, especially within the last several months. So, when a client comes in, I like to sit face to face with them. If you guys follow Pretty Little Ombre on Instagram, Jamie C, she's amazing. She gives such great consultation tips. A lot of these things I actually got from her, but sitting face to face with your client is like the biggest thing that I got from her. A lot of the times you'll have a client come in, they sit in your chair, you're sitting behind them and you're looking at them through the mirror and talking to them that way. If you actually turn them to face you and you are sitting eye level with them, it makes it a more human interaction. It's less intuitive intimidating for the client and it doesn't make them feel like you're above them in any kind of way. So we keep a little stool in our salon. I will literally bring that over to the chair. I will sit down eye level with them and we will just do our consultation that way. And that way I can really see their face up close too and I can like read their reaction a little bit better than if I was like standing from a distance looking in the mirror. So the first thing I ask them is what is your goal? What are you looking to do today? I always, 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 always look at photos. Now, obviously if the client's coming in for just like a routine trim, I'm not gonna go that in depth. I'm not pulling out photos for that. But if I'm doing any color or cutting off more than a few inches, I always like to pull up photos. So I'll ask them if they have any inspiration pictures and then I will pull some up on my phone as well. Especially when you're discussing color, it is always so important to use photos as reference because your client might tell you, oh, I wanna be a honey blonde, but what you're envisioning as honey blonde could be totally different from what they're Visioning. So it's always important to have photos so that you can make sure you're on the same page. Now when looking at photos, it's also really important that you are diving deeper and asking them more questions. It's not enough to just pull up a picture and be like, yep, this is what I want. Okay, great. I'm going to do that. Because a lot of the times the client might be seeing things a little differently than you are, or maybe it's not the hair overall they like. Maybe it's just the placement of the blonde pieces. Maybe it's just the tone. Maybe it's just the way the hair styled. Maybe it's the cut, the fullness. Maybe it's just the person in the picture's face that they like. Like maybe they just like the overall photo and the vibe of the person. So I like to always cover the face of the person in the photo and then I'll say to them, okay, well tell me what it is about this photo that you like. I just pick apart the picture, I point out every little thing that I notice and I ask them, do you like this? Do you like this? And then I'll start talking about their hair and I'll ask them, okay, what are the major differences between the hair you have right at this moment and the hair you're seeing in the photo? Because that will also help you understand what it is that they're seeing when they look at that photo and what it is that they like about that photo. From there, I like to go into what their hair history is. This is extremely important if you're doing hair color. I tell them that I wanna know everything they've done to it within the last one to two years. And I make sure that I clarify, even if you've used color and it has faded, I don't care if it's not in your hair anymore, I wanna know. I wanna know what you've done. I wanna know if it was done professionally in a salon, if you did it at home, was it out of a box in a drugstore, was it stuff you got yourself at Sally's, what have you used, when was the last time you did it. So then after we talk about their hair history, I like to go even further so I can really get to know them, get to know their hair, their lifestyle, what kind of client are they. I wanna know what shampoo and conditioner you're using. Do you use a heat protectant? Do you apply any kind of like serums or oils to your hair? What styling products do you use? How do you normally style your hair? How much time do you typically spend every day on your hair styling it? Do you blow dry it? Do you normally let it air dry? Do you like to wear it straight? Do you like to add waves? Do you like to wear your natural texture? Not only will that give me an idea of what kind of products I can suggest to them to take home, because I always say this, but if I'm gonna be doing your hair color girl and you're spending $300 in like four hours doing your hair, I'm not letting you go home to wash your hair with Suave. That's not happening. <laughs> so if they tell me they're using cheap stuff from the drugstore, I know, okay, I need to make sure that I'm sending them home with salon quality shampoo and conditioner, but it'll also give you an idea of what kind of color and cut, et cetera, is going to work best for them. I also ask them how often they're looking to come back into the salon for touch-ups. If they wanna be a solid white blonde and they're naturally really dark, but they're only looking to come in every six months, 
we're gonna have to discuss an alternative. So then from there, I discuss whether or not their goal is realistic for them. Maybe it's not realistic because they have layers and layers and layers and layers of box dye, so it's just, we can't get you to the blonde color that you want. Or maybe it's just not the best fit for them. Maybe they want something that's more low maintenance, but what they're asking for is very high maintenance. If what they're asking for is not realistic, then I will explain to them why, and then we will either discuss an alternative, something that we can do instead, or if it's something that needs to be broken down into several sessions and different stages, I'll explain that to them and I'll let them know what will be possible today and then how long it will take for them to get to their goal. Then from there, I move on to discussing budget. This is so, so crucial. You have to discuss budget with your client because they might not know what to expect. They might not have any idea of how much this is gonna cost them. And you don't want them to be surprised at the end when you're ringing them up. Some people are just really weird about discussing money. So as the stylist, you should just open up that conversation. So I will just straight up ask them, okay, is there any budget that we're looking to stick to today for this appointment? Let's say they have super dark hair like my color and they wanna be silver and they tell me they're looking to spend $150. That's definitely not gonna be realistic. Not to mention, you wanna make sure that they're taking home good products with them. It's also going to cost money to keep up with that color, touching up the roots, touching up the toner, coming in for trims, etc. So from there, I would tell them how much we charge and I would say, okay, the hair that you're asking for would cost approximately between this amount. You also mentioned to me that you use swab shampoo and conditioner at home, so it's also going to cost around this much for good take home product because in order to really maintain this color and fully get your money's worth, you wanna make sure you're using the right products at home. And then you're gonna to need to come in X amount of weeks and it's going to cost approximately this amount to maintain that hair every however many weeks. Does that make sense? So just lay it all out for them. Like, okay, this is what your budget is, this is what it's gonna actually cost to get the hair that you want. So if their budget is lower than what they're asking for, then I would discuss with them, okay, well, if that's how much you're looking to spend, first and foremost, let's subtract the cost of the take-home products first because that is really the most important thing. Let's say like maybe $60 or something. I don't know, that's just like off the top of my head. So, okay, that gives us $90 to work with. What can we do color-wise that's gonna cost $90? I always say we can start with just the top and the front, the parts you're gonna see the most, we'll leave underneath in the back for now, and then as you save up some money, you can come back in another month or so, and then we can do the underneath, and we can like slowly get you where you wanna be little by little so that you don't have to pay as much up front. But make sure you're mentioning how much it's gonna cost for them to maintain that hair over time. Because I think a lot of the times clients will think, okay, I have this much amount of money, I'm gonna go in and get my hair colored, I'm so excited, I have enough to pay for it, but then they don't realize that, oh, you have to come in every like six weeks for a gloss and a haircut, and you know, like it, it adds up, it costs money to maintain that color. So make sure you're discussing that too. And that's basically it from there. I just asked, okay, are there any other questions you have for me before we get started? Are there any concerns? Do you feel comfortable with that? Do you understand what we're doing today? On average, I wanna say my longest, most thorough consultations don't take me more than 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be a super, super long conversation. Really, it just comes down to understanding what is it that my client ultimately wants? How much are they willing to pay for it? Is that realistic? Is it gonna work for them? And just explaining as best as you can the reality and the whole entire process of what it is that they're asking for. I know it can be difficult because as hairstylists, we obviously see things differently, things that are just such common sense that we would never even really like think twice about. To clients might be like a completely foreign concept. Do you know what I mean? So you wanna make sure that you're really sitting down, taking your time and connecting with the client. So those are all of my tips. That is how I do my consultations. Any hairstylists out there that are watching, if there's anything that you do differently, anything that you would add to this, definitely let me know. Like I said, I'm always trying to get better, always trying to learn more and pick up different people's tips. But that's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.